This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures, and paints. Discount prices at miniaturemarket.com. It's time for... Uh, by now, people are tired of countdowns. I know I'm tired of them, okay? I don't know how many more things we can count down. I mean, uh, should I count down how many... What's my favorite shoes of 2017? Should I count down? Anyways, this is one that's always very personal to me because I am an avid war gamer. I don't do a lot on stream because I always feel that I would be intruding on our audience, which is more board game or miniature or painting orientated. Um, but if you want to see some war gaming streams, I'm more than happy to stream five hours of a war game. I really am, especially a solo game. But in this particular video, we are counting down what I consider the top 10 games of 2017. And this is my last countdown of the year. Well, no, it's 2018, which means I'm going to be doing some at the end of 2000. The last one for 2017. Okay, there we go. I saved the best for last. At number 10. 1754 Academy Games. I love these guys. 1754 Conquest, great game. The French and Indian War. I mean, what more can you say? It 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 it, it falls into that whole Birth of America series that they've put out. Um, just some tremendous, tremendous games. I have yet to play a bad game from this company. This is at number ten because I feel it's almost. I I you know it's almost. I really enjoyed this game. For me, it's at number 10 because everything else on this list, for me, really stood out this year. Uh, at number 9, Pericl Pericles. This is a fantastic game. Uh, you could play this solitary. Um, it is just a game that I, I, I really, really stood out for me. Um, you know, taking in, in the Spartans or, or the Athenians and, and just, you could play a two-player, you could play a four-player, you could play a solitaire. Just a very good, solid, solid game. At number eight is another Academy game. This game is just fantastic. I mean, I really, really enjoyed this game. And that is 878 Vikings. Really good um using you, you know the the vikings are trying to invade england it, it, you have the feel there's such a good feel to the game um I, I actually watch a lot of people playing it and i love how it integrates and takes those old war gamers and kind of brings them into the modern board gaming area where they're willing to play I, i've seen a lot of younger kids playing with the older generation and for me this is a great gateway game to kind of bring those two together and that's what we really need in order to keep board gaming going forward and number seven is a game that really caught me off guard and that's unconditional surrender i really love this i really really enjoyed this and i've got to get this to the table more um i'm kind of getting out of those paper map things but um I have to say that you know you know this this you know getting getting this to the table was an enjoyment everything played so smoothly I really enjoyed it uh and number 6 Arcubus now this game here is a Richard board game and you can never go wrong the father of war gaming himself from battle cry to memoir all the way through some people argue the games are too simple uh, listen if it gets people to the table god bless him he's done a wonderful job and has done some great work and i'll tell you his war games are always very enjoyable and it will always find a place on that shelf right there at number five bloody monday bloody monday Napoleon, Napoleon invading Russia. The map is huge. It's beautiful. 
This is a masterpiece. If you can get your hands on this, you need to. Um, it's everything you want in a game, and I'm telling you right now, um, hidden uh, hidden troops, fantastic, love it, absolutely home run, bloody Monday. Get your hands on that bad boy. And number four, uh, I've made no bones about it, but uh, DVG is one of my favorite companies. I really enjoy their games, and B17 Leader. Uh, just falls into all the other leader games. Just when you get a game from Dan, you are getting something that he puts his heart and soul into. The people they they play test it. Everything plays so smoothly. Really, really enjoy a lot of their stuff. It's just un unbelievable, and I I, I just I, I I can't say enough. And it's at number four. Number three, now this one's a little controversial because I, when I first played this game, I just went, uh, another Operation Market Garden. And people went, oh, you know, you don't know nothing, blah, 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 blah. You know something? They're right. They were right. I didn't know anything because I decided to put it to the table again and play it again. I actually played it two more times. And I found each time I played it, I loved it even more, and I was too hasty in my review of that. Um, I can never get tired of Operation Market Garden, to be honest with you. And, and this wasn't just another Operation Market Garden uh, game. This was really well put together and a fantastic, fantastic job. And that's Holland 44. Whew. Boy, was I wrong. I just needed to play it a little bit more. And to be able to sit here and tell you I was wrong. <sighs> yes, it hurts, but hey, got to call it as I see it. I was wrong. <laughs> At number two. Now, this game, people either love it or hate it. But the thing that I really love about this company is that Mark Walker has put a lot of passion into his war games and he believes in his war games and his games are quality the maps are unbelievable and the rules and i've enjoyed everything that he's done from night of man to 65 all the way to this old school tactical volume 2 western front now eastern front people have complained about but you know something they listened they made the adjustments, and they came out with Part 2, Volume 2, The Western Front, and they twi they listened to people. They really do, and they've always answered questions. They put a lot of passion into what they do. You should go visit their website. A matter of fact, uh, what's today? The I'm filming this on January 4th. They're having a big sale all the way into next week, 30% off. If you can get your hands on some of this stuff, I absolutely think you should check it out. This is a great game, another introductory game where you can take and put this big beautiful map with the well-drawn tanks and everything else that they have and get somebody younger that's never played and get them into this game. I'm telling you, they would enjoy it and love it and I think this, for me, this year, deserves my number two slot now before we get to the number one game this year i'd like to tell, give you some things that i really felt were honorable mentions because there was a lot of good stuff that came out this year now one of the things that has come out in the past but they did a kickstarter and i got a chance to play it was d-day dice i really enjoyed that israel air force leader I thought that was a very good game. Colonial Twilight, part of the coin series. Another very, very good game. It came in too late for me to, to check out, but a game that I was excited about and I think would have made that, that list, and I have to leave it off because I did not get to play it, was Wild Blue Yonder, Down in Flame series. I've never played anything that was wrong out of that. And then finally, 
enemy coast ahead I thought was absolutely fantastic and deserves to be mentioned as an honorable mention so what's number one who's the big hero who's the one that comes out as my number one game <sighs> well there's only one person that has made games that I have been blown away beyond belief and that's again Dan Verzen now the thing I want to say about this though is this would probably you know when I start thinking about my all-time favorite games and and then some of them in there when I start thinking about second front it always needs another player a lot of these games are, are solo games and if they had a two-player kind of variant in it oh boy these would be up in my top five of all time but I absolutely loved what they did with Sherman leader okay I loved Tiger year leaguer leader uh, before it but the care the packaging the quality of components when you sit in front of there and you're putting your squad together with your tanks and everything you feel you are the leader of uh, uh, the Sherman leader you are leading these guys into battle and the events and how things all transpire and play out no two games are the same Dan does a great job and all the people that work with him and 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 I can't say enough about this game being my top game of the year Sherman leader by Dan Verzen well there you have it I've said it all do you agree maybe you do maybe you don't but that's the beauty of it there were so many good games that came out this year a lot of great stuff I was really worried when I came in, went to Gen Con that there wouldn't be enough but GMT kept on cranking out Mark Walker flying pig games kept uh, cranking stuff out and DVG is always working hard to crank out games along with compass and everybody else as long as these companies and we go out and we buy this game wargaming will not die and that is what is most important to pass it on to the next generation well there you go that's my top 10 for for 2017 i hope you enjoy this until next time i'm rob warren we'll see you soon